Welcome to my new series called News on Drugs, where we poke fun at some of my favorite articles of the past month in science, medicine, and health. If you're new and you enjoy this sort of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. News on Drugs, it's the News on Drugs, it's like the regular news, except there's no news and it's just jokes about science and drugs. In sad news, Professor John Mallard, the inventor of the MRI scan, died recently. If only there was some sort of scan that we could have done to work out what was wrong with him before he passed. His family wanted a traditional burial. I think they said that anything like a cremation would have reminded him too much of work. Apparently he invented the machine because his family were so loud he just wanted some peace and quiet around the house. My favourite part of this though was the picture of the first prototype. I mean the guy must have been a fan of Star Wars because it looks so much like the Death Star. In Wales they opened up the first mental health unit for mothers and babies. The reason they've done this is because of a condition called postpartum depression where women who've just given birth go into a depression. So really noble cause and something that was really needed but I don't know how we can tell a baby's getting sad though. What are they all of a sudden growing a side fringe and listening to Nirvana? Sitting on the sofa, watching a rom-com, eating ice cream, talking about how their relationship with their ex teddy bear just wasn't meant to be. Could psilocybin found in magic mushrooms help treat depression. A drug found in magic mushrooms was found to be a potential unconventional treatment to mental health illnesses. A spokesperson from the research group said, whoa man, the, the walls are melting. Oh, wh why are lights always on the ceiling? Why can't we have lights on the floor? Who knows, in the next decade we could see Gen Z doctors prescribing patients a dose of Glastonbury. This is just an example of scientists doing mad that they want to do. It's like an experiment they did recently where they discovered that having five pints a day helps treat Alzheimer's disease, which would be amazing if it was true and I didn't just make that up. Is it really news that a mind-altering drug could have an effect on the mind? This elderly woman was dropped off at the wrong house after being discharged from the hospital. This definitely was one of my favourite stories. The reason is that she was dropped off at a stranger's house. Her son found out when he called the hospital and said she'd been dropped off in Newport and he said, What is she doing in Newport? She was dropped off at this stranger's house and the funny bit is that she was put to bed in this house. She spent two hours there. The man who received her at the house didn't recognise that this strange woman wasn't his sister and put her to bed. Can you imagine her son on the phone to this guy in this house? Oh, she's accidentally come to your house. What, why don't you just keep her for a bit? Bring her back after tea. Oh, how about Tuesday? Bring her back on Tuesday then. And the woman that's in bed in this random house. Just to let you know, Auntie called about Auntie, but she's been dead for six years! Human trials for coronavirus vaccines have been announced. These are called challenge trials, where we on purpose give someone a dose of the virus to see how they react to it, how they build up an immune response, the dose of a virus that's needed for them to develop the infection, and we can see who's getting it and who's not. I don't know about you guys, but I think we should all be volunteering Piers Morgan for this. Volunteers spent three weeks isolating in a single room, potentially a fate worse than contracting coronavirus. They administer the dose intranasally, so through the nose, kind of similar to how they do the coronavirus testing. I really hope they don't get the two mixed up. Don't worry, I've heard they very clearly marked it as coronavirus drive-through test and challenge designated trial test. So there's one marked CDTT and the other marked CDTT, so I'm glad we've cleared that one up. In health, US regulators have said that we shouldn't be using treadmills around children. I think this is probably because children's minds are like sponges. They'll see you on the treadmill, they'll copy your actions, and they'll become addicted to the treadmill. Then we'll have these little speedy babies whipping around that we just can't catch. Can you imagine if we greased up these babies and tried to catch them like wild hogs? It'd turn into the craziest game that's ever known 
to man. Plus, this would be an excellent way of getting some serotonin back in those babies that are battling depression. I should note that the exception to this treadmill use is insecure dads who are still allowed to use them so they can get that feeling of still running away from home while still being at home. More on children, there was a petition in a local school and ice cream and custard was dropped from the school menu. I feel like when you've got time to petition for custard amongst the pandemic, you know you've just got too much time on your hands and not enough custard in your mouth. We're not petitioning for improved education or smaller class sizes, we're hitting the real topics of custard. Another story about children and eating suggested that children should only be eating two 100 calorie snacks a day. According to the study, an average child consumes 400 biscuits each year. That's an average of one biscuit every single day, except for that one kid who eats zero biscuits every day and then one day just goes absolutely mad for biscuits. The problem is not children's eating, it's fast food advertising. Adverts for healthy eating next to adverts for McDonald's. It's like telling children to study hard for exams whilst advertising Thorpe Park and actually being able to go and play outside. Examples of 100 calorie snacks on the NHS website included beans on toast, apple and peanut butter, and cheese and pickle canapes. I feel sorry for that one kid whose mum is giving him cheese and pickle canapes. That guy is getting bullied, focusing on his studies, becoming a doctor, and then writing an article about why children should be eating cheese and pickle canapes. An article in The Telegraph said that comfort eating was a myth. The best thing about this article was the way that they actually did this experiment. Women were asked to perform maths exercises whilst getting electric shocks and all-you-can-eat buffet. The other flaw in this experiment is that they talked about comfort eating, but they did it at a buffet. I don't know if they've ever been to a buffet before, but the aim is to eat as much as you can until you feel sick, not comfortable. I think they've misunderstood the word comfort eating. If at the end of it, you don't feel the sickest you've ever felt, you've probably failed the buffet. It sounds like the kind of wild science experiment that someone just made up, almost as if the scientists were too high on psilocybin from that previous magic mushrooms experiment. In reproduction, a woman got pregnant while she was pregnant with another baby. And I'm not talking about twins, I'm talking about she was pregnant, three weeks later she conceived another baby. And when they did the dating scans, they worked out that one baby was three weeks older than the other baby. This is incredibly rare and they have a name for it, it's called superfetation. The father's probably got super cementation and the mother super ovulation to produce Produce these super babyations. It's always those attention seeking younger siblings that always want the limelight. You couldn't even give him three weeks. This story sounds like the kind of thing that your mate has just made up on the playground. Oi. Do you hear about that that kid in America who ate his own mouth? No, no, that can't be true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. My, my cousin told me about it. In other genetics news, scientists have grown human cells in monkey embryos. I'm not being funny, but have they never heard of the Planet of the Apes series of films? This sounds like a recipe for disaster. This is the clearest example of real life imitating movies since Donald Trump decided to imitate Dumb and Dumber. Since Boris Johnson tried to imitate Darkest Hour, since the year 2020 tried to imitate I Am A Legend, since Elon Musk imitated Moonraker, since Dominic Cummings imitated I, robot. They say that these cells are now able to communicate with each other. Incidentally, they happen to be saying, Ooh, ha, 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 ha. The article also makes note to in 2017, where we created a human pig hybrid using a similar scenario. Now I'd never heard of this, and then I remembered I have heard of this pig before, because he starred in that Simpsons movie. Spider pig does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, we can't. He's a pig. And finally, in space news, NASA flew a small helicopter on Mars. See, they're allowed to fly a helicopter on Mars, but I'm not allowed to fly a small drone in Manchester. That's gotta be one of the most high risk flights that anyone's ever done. Can you imagine crashing that drone and you've gotta travel 290 million kilometers to flip it the right side up again? That is one embarrassing reason to have to ask Elon Musk to borrow a rocket. Although the flight was a success, NASA was disappointed 
wanted to realize that Baggage Reclaim had sent everyone's luggage to Saturn. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. That was episode one of News on Drugs. If you enjoyed it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Take care and we'll see you in the next episode.